Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this video, we are going to look at what the heck is the electric field. It's a pretty wild and pervasive concept that is a real physical entity, but still very mysterious. Woo, so fun. Okay, so uh, we will start from Coulomb's Law, which as a refresher was determined experimentally meaning that um, someone, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Coulomb. That's why it's named after them. I was like, who discovered Coulomb's law? Probably a person named Coulomb. Um, some of my physics history is there and some of it is not. Um, and a lot of it I've forgotten. Anyway, okay, so Coulomb's law, which is this equation, tells us the force that is exerted between two charges. Um, so little q is kind of our a source charge and big Q is our test charge and similar to how we can use uh, the gravitational force to determine how two uh, b massive bodies are interacting we can use the electric force or Coulomb's law to figure out how two charges interact um, so again as a refresher this is just a constant out front that never changes and then the force depends on the size of each of the charges, basically how much charge they have, and uh, inversely dependent on the separation distance squared. So basically this tells us that the larger the charges, the more they interact. If you have two really big charges, they'll, and they're opposite, they'll go Phew! and they'll want to attract each other, or if they're, if they're the same, they'll repel. Um, and then uh, inversely, uh, inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So that's a script R. We're getting a lot of R's in here. Um, so the farther apart these charges are, the less they exert a force on each other. And then the force points in the direction um, between the two charges. Uh, if the force is negative, it means that the force is attractive, then you want to go boop and be friends. And if it's uh, positive, then it means it's repellent and they want to push each other away. Okay, cool. So from Coulomb's law, we can ask what happens um, if we have a bunch of source charges and we want to kind of figure out how they affect different types of charges in the space around them. Well, okay, so let's draw a picture. Yeah, pictures. Um, so my axes don't really, don't really matter at this point. But I am going to use different colors. Okay, so let's say we have a bunch, bunch of source charges all in red. Uh, we'll call this Q1, we'll call this Q2, um, we'll call this Q3, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have, ooh, we're going to get another color. And then we have a test charge up here. And our question is, how do does the sum of these test charges affect our so, uh, sorry, so how do the sum of these source charges affect our test charge Q? Um, and so from Coulomb's law, you might remember that we can add up all of um, the individual forces to get the total force. So that would be um, F1 plus F2 plus dot, dot, dot um, all the way to however many charges I drew. And what this would be is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, and then the only things that are changing, so we'd have Q1 times our uh, test charge over script R1 squared in the R hat direction. Um, and so what that would be is this distance here. That's going to be vector R1. And then, uh oh, I ran out of space, plus Q2 times big Q over script r2 squared in the r hat 2 direction um, and so that is going to be doot doot 2 and that's a vector and etc 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 okay but wait this q for our uh, test charge is going to be the same for each of these terms so i can just pull that out front because again we like to be lazy and write as less as little as possible okay uh, so we pull that out front, 4 pi epsilon naught, and then the only thing left in the parentheses is going to be the size of each of our source charges. Um, and by size, I really mean like the amount of charge that they have. 
and then the distance uh, between the source charge and our test charge squared in that direction. Q2 script R2 squared plus et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, and so now we're like, hey, wait a second, like, let's be lazy. Let's just define a new thing that's called the electric field. And that is going to be a vector. Um, and so we get to do this in physics. When we start to notice patterns, we can be like, hey, wait a second, I see a pattern. I'm going to create a new quantity. And so what we would do is we would say, okay, well, this new quantity is going to be defined as everything except this Q. Um, and so then what we end up getting is that we get the electric field, which is a, am I gonna have enough space here? Um, the electric field is a function of position. Do, 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 which way can I write it? Okay, so we'll just define it down here. Um, and it's defined as one over four pi epsilon naught. run out of space. Or it is a little small. Okay. And then times the sum of all of these. So remember, the only thing we're not including is our test charge. So it's going to run from i equals 1 until n, where n is the total number of source charges that we have. And that's going to be um, qi over the uh, distance from, well, hold on, we'll get to that in a sec script r i squared times r i hat. Okay, so what uh, what is this? Well, really, it's just the distance. We can erase q and just say, we don't even need to have a charge there. It's just some point p. Um, and uh, this script r i, or yeah, script, the script r with the subscript of i, um, is the vector distance between each source charge and the point P. Um, and just to quickly note, so you have um, this vector R going from the origin, so that is vector R, and that never changes. And then from the origin to each charge, you have, we'll call this R prime of, of uh, well, in this case, it'd be two, but basically from the origin to each source charge, you would have a vector R prime. And then from the source charge to your point P, that is where the script R comes in. So you can see why we spend a lot of time dealing with spherical coordinates, because um, doing the electric field in spherical coordinates can be a lot easier than in Cartesian. Okay, so that's the electric field. Boom, we get to define it. Okay, well, what is it? Well, okay, we can look at it and we can say, well, we know that it's a vector, meaning that it depends on position. So if we move our point P over here, we'll call this P2, we are going to get a different electric field calculation at this point than we would at this point. Also, at this point is going to be different because it depends on position. That's where this comes in. Um, and it also depends on the size of the source charges, how big these charges are, as well as their shape or distribution. So, for example, if we had a bunch of source charges um, kind of in this quadrant, the electric field is going to be much stronger here than it is over here. Pretty cool, right? Um, okay. But that still doesn't really tell us what it is. It's really just like how it changes. Well, yeah, uh, that's kind of where we're at. We know that the electric field is an actual physical quantity. It affects things in the physical world. It's measurable. Um, it's clearly, you can calculate it, but it's kind of a little unclear what it actually is. Um, some folks, I think it was Maxwell, thought that it was a... a um, they kind of like uh, thought that it existed in the ether, that it was like this mechanical force, but we proved that the ether doesn't actually exist. Um, so we're kind of like, I don't know, it's real, uh, but it's the electric field. Um, it's pervasive. Uh, per it's pervasive through space and time. Um, and we're not really sure like 
what it looks like. Um, it looks like light, I guess. <laughs> so I think that that's really cool that like we understand how to calculate it very specifically, but we're still kind of like, oh, this weird thing. Super cool. Um, so that's the electric field. It's defined by this equation. We can calculate it. Uh, it affects charges and it affects um, electricity and magnetism are kind of two flavors of the same thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's still a little bit mysterious, which I think is delightful. Cool. Okay, so that's the electric field and that is where the definition comes from. Um, what we will do in the next video is look at a continuous charge distribution because let's be real, adding up all of the individual charges is really painful. Um, I shouldn't say painful, but tedious. So we want to be lazy and quick. Um, so we'll use an integral um, to replace this summation to make our lives a little bit easier. Um, and we'll look at an actual example on how to calculate the electric field um, of a straight line. Cool. All right. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.